Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Sociology Analytica. This is Pooja Prasanna, your Sociology faculty. So I'm going to start with the next topic, that is caste system. Again, caste is one of the important uh, topic uh, in paper two. So most questions will be coming from caste system. So please read all the points, all the you know whatever the subtopics in detail. Okay. Here I've asked a very simple question. It's also a previous year question. That is, how have the struggles against untouchability changed their forms and perspective from Gandhi into Ambedkar position? Uh, see, this is a very, uh, honestly, this is a very simple question because it's directly there in the syllabus and uh, <clears throat> uh, whatever the points, so there's nothing like important points, not important points. So you can just give a summary of what uh, Gandhi has talked about um, un caste and untouchability and how has Ambedkar talked about caste and untouchability. So if you can write this, it will be a good answer. And just remember, this is a 10 marker question. So that means, so one side uh, Gandhi and other side Ambedkar. So, so whenever such question comes, when two personalities have been asked for the same question, make sure that you're giving equal weightage to both. So don't write like three points of Gandhi and one and a half page of Ambedkar. Don't do that. Okay, if you do that, you, you will end up getting less marks. So whenever such two uh, personalities, two thinkers, two personalities comes, please always make sure to give equal importance. So Gandhi, five points, five marks and Ambedkar, five marks. It's like that. Okay, so let's start with Gandhian view. Uh, see again I have given like almost all the holistic content so based on how much space is there you can write how much ever you want to write okay uh, see Gandhian view of <clears throat> in general caste itself you know the Gandhian view of caste is actually influenced by his political ideology uh, as well as his cultural values and pragmatism pragmatism he is actually optimistic he is optimistic about his uh, he is having a very positive um, uh, you know understanding about caste system so unlike uh, Ambedkar okay Ambedkar had a very dysfunctional view of caste system he wanted caste system to be completely gone away from Indian society but then Gandhi did not had that uh, uh, did not had that view Gandhi had actually a pragmatic view about caste system he believed that whatever the Varna system was there it is actually a good system but the only thing is the certain social evils have seeped into Varna system and that actually should be reformed so that is why he understood caste from a pragmatic approach okay so moving on, uh, Gandhi has actually talked about untouchability and he has written multiple different articles. If you can remember and if you can remember, you can write this point. Otherwise, also it is totally fine. But it actually adds on to your you know, answer if you write this. So he has written two important articles that is caste must go and untouchability as a crime. These are two important articles written by Gandhi on uh, caste as well as untouchability. Next, he took a reformist approach. <clears throat> That is, as Ambedkar took a revolutionary approach, he took a reformist approach. As I said, he did believe in Varna system. Okay, he did not want it, the complete Varna system to go away from the Indian structure or Indian society. Because he believed that, see, Varna system to a greater extent started from Vedic time period. Okay, and it is very difficult for a system which has been continued from Vedic time period and to completely take away from Indian society. He believed that that is not possible. And he also believed that people have got used to the system and to change to a new system, so it, it will bring chaos into the system. So that is why what he thought is whatever the Varna system during Vedic time period, it was there. So it was actually a good system because there was change in mobility, there was uh, flexibility. Okay, so there was no much rigidity. So he actually believed in that system. So that is why, so what he believed that we should go for a reformation of whatever the existing, so, you know, existing situ situation. Why? Because certain social evils with the time, so it has seeped into Varna system or caste system and we need to reform that. So that is why he took a reformative approach. So that is why he supported Varna Vyavastha as well as Ashrama Vyavastha, which is a part of, uh, uh, you know, caste system. Okay. But then he condemned the current form of caste system, that is practice of untouchability, Sati system, etc, etc. So he actually condemned all those things. Okay. Moving on. Uh, you can actually mention this point that, you know, he actually did a Harijan campaign uh, for around two years. He did a Harijan campaign almost all throughout Pan-India uh, that you can drop a point. And then going to his understanding of untouchability, what he says is that untouchability has made Indians untouchable in the whole world. That is, if we, if we continue practicing untouchability, then we ourselves will, the whole of Indians will become untouchable in the eyes of other people. Why? Right? Because it is actually a very bad practice, isn't it? Nobody is going to appreciate a bad practice. So he says that if any one of us practice untouchability, then we ourselves, everyone will become untouchable in the eyes of, uh, in the eyes of the whole world. So we should actually let go of 
this practice okay continuing for gandhi continuation of untouchability is a slow destruction and slow destruction of indian culture itself isn't it why because whom are we considering as untouchable a part of people who actually belong to varna system it's, itself isn't it a part of people who belong to our religion that is hindu religion itself so he says that you know we cannot possibly think that some p some set of people are polluted we cannot think that okay if we start thinking that some section of people are polluted so that itself is a reflection of what we are going towards destruction okay and uh, according to him he says that hinduism never preached that some some people should be considered as untouchable he says hinduism never preached that but with the time with the priestly class interpretation and other things things have changed so what we need to do we need to go for a reformation of these changes do you understand and finally what he says is that again see whenever you talk about gandhi and culture gandhi and caste uh, you just make sure one thing that he never goes out of his political ideology he'll always be sticking to political ideology and also he always take into consideration of swaraj that is independence also when whatever he talks he always keep that also in mind so what he goes on to say is that without removal of untouchability okay india cannot get its swaraj what is swaraj swaraj is nothing but independence isn't it so it's uh, like for example untouchables untouchables are still under the clutches of whom they are clutch uh, they are under the clutches of the uh, upper caste people isn't it so what how can we ask freedom from british because indians were under the clutches of british so how can we ask swaraj or independence when one section of people are actually i mean we are only controlling one section of people so what he says first we need to remove untouchability then only it makes sense for indians to get independence okay so this is idea of gandhi uh, how much of a space is there based on that you can write any of these points moving on to ambedkar what ambedkar says ambedkar have a it has a very radical view okay uh, uh, gandhi has a reformist reformistic and uh, <clears throat> pragmatic view of caste system but then ambedkar has a radical view of caste system and he calls for what annihilation of caste system this is very important word you have to write annihilation of caste whenever you talk about ambedkar what is annihilation of caste that is completely meeting out or rooting out of caste system from the indian society is nothing but caste system he says that caste system should not even exist in indian society it should completely we should completely make it go away from indian society so now we'll see why is he talking like annihilation for caste system see before that we also have to talk about his tussle with gandhi okay so gandhi was talking about reformation and pragmatic view of caste system but then uh, ambedkar says that gandhian view of caste system or gandhian view of varna system is actually utopian why because what gandhi says is that see there are multiple different varnas like brahmin kshatriya vaishya shudra and avarna or they are also called as dalit okay so brahmins have one work uh, vaishyas like let's say vaishyas are traders and shudras are let's say agricultural workers or something like that so what gandhi says is that why are we associating pollution to a work okay we should not associate purity and pollution to any work because every work should be considered as pure work okay we should not associate some work is uh, impure and some work is pure every work even cleaning the job even cleaning a gutter why are we considering cleaning gutter as impure work because someone has to do that work isn't it so we, what gandhi says is that every job is equally important every varna is equally important he talks about taking out of that pollution notion whatever it was there in caste system but then ambedkar says that this cannot happen okay this idea itself is a utopian idea why because the notion of pollution is not going to go away from the varna structure it is not going to go why because varna structure the division itself is on the basis of what purity and pollution so that is why he criticizes gandhi moving on he also talks about legislative and political measures so what gandhi says gandhi says let's have qualitative change let's try to change the mind of people okay let's try to change the notion how uh, the notion what people attach towards different caste but then ambedkar says no these qualitative change it is good to say all this qualitative change is going to bring changes but then what actually is going to bring change the actual changes which uh, you know which can change the life of people is quantitative change so he actually professes for legislative measures as well as political measures that is he actually asks for reservation political measures and etc etc okay you can just give one uh some examples here that is right to vote right to contest in election reservation etc so you can here mention the next is what um, ambedkar envisions is there should not be any form of hierarchy because caste system is nothing but hierarchy isn't it or varna is nothing but hierarchy so ambedkar says there should not be any hierarchy at all see when he talks about no hierarchy or no varna little bit he here he will be influenced from marx okay he he actually talks little bit from a marxian perspective what he says that see um 
and generally right. varna system varna system usually do not like you know because of varna there is purity and pollution so not everyone has equal access to resources not everyone can take up any occupation they want to take up so varna system is a reflection of what no equality no liberty or no fraternity and these are the three important uh, important uh, philosophy of life which everyone should actually have these are the three important value system what everyone should actually have but then this varna system doesn't actually led doesn't uphold all this value system so that is why he asked for annihilation of caste system okay moving on he also talks about abolition of religion okay he actually goes on to say abolition of religion whenever he talks about abolition of religion this is also a reflection of what that he is talking like a marxian okay and if if religion is not abolished at least what the government should do government i mean he advocated for state appointed priest okay at least the state should appoint the priest like what on the basis of merit see we appoint uh, bureaucrats we appoint you know managers bankers etc etc right the same way even the priest should also be appointed by the state on the basis of merit and he also went on to uh, you know pro he also advocated for intercaste marriage because more and more intercaste marriage then the prevalence of caste system will also come down there will be a structural change in the caste system okay so these are some of the points of ambedkar see uh, if it is a 10 marker you can write this and let's say if it is a 20 marker okay what i have done is there's a there's a sociologist called as christophe jeffrelet okay christophe jeffrelet he Uh, he has, uh, you know, specifically has studied Ambedkar. He has studied Ambedkar, and he has summarized what Ambedkar, how Ambedkar has tackled with caste as well as untouchability. So this is the book title, Ambedkar and Untouchability of two thousand four. This is the book title. In this book, he has talked about how uh, Ambedkar has ta has uh, talked about caste and untouchability. The first thing what Ambedkar has done is to build a respectable identity for Dalit. by reinterpretation of history so what he says he gives a new history altogether so there were many many theories of a caste system isn't it origin of caste system so ambedkar gives a new theory altogether that who are these dalits dalits are basically the tribes who actually lost in war and eventually all the resources were snatched away from them and then eventually they became the uh, like you know uh, <clears throat> that is dalits whatever the condition it was it is because they actually lost in the war so he reinterprets the history here the second step what he do is he build a legitimate electorate space for them he wanted to build a legitimate electorate space what is he what he do that is political and legislative measures the third is to lift the conditions of dalit what he believed is that why brahmins and kshatriyas or vaishyas they are doing better in society because they are working in a different different fields so he also believed that dalit should also work in different fields dalit should also work at the top level okay so in order to work top level that is he, the dalit should work both with the british as well as indian national congress that is wherever top positions are there dalit should actually work there okay <laughs> next he talked about conversion uh, like en masse outside uh, hinduism why because hinduism is not representing dalits uh, dalits faith dalits Uh, whatever they you know uh, they uh, what even they you know, they are not even treating uh, dalits as uh, human beings so what he says we should not continue being hindus so if hinduism cannot treat them better then we should actually convert en masse and eventually if you remember he converts uh, you know before a week into his death he actually converted into buddhism okay so this is just a summary of uh you know ambedkar's his you know study of caste and untouchability which has been summarized by christophe jeffrelet in case if you have space you can write this particular point okay uh, in case if you have any further queries please drop your queries in the comment section i'll be checking those comment section i'll see you all tomorrow with the one more caste question thank you so much